Hello, I wanted to talk about how to interpret CT perfusion images in the setting of acute stroke with an emphasis on qualitative visual interpretation as opposed to quantitative interpretation. Although we will mention quantitative interpretation along the way also. So the first and most important thing uh, to remember is that CBV, that series, the CBV series, corresponds to the core infarct, which is the same as the DWI um, sequence on MRI. It's your irreversible core, irreversibly infarcted brain tissue. That is what the CBV tells you. Then you look at MTT, and that is a combination of any core infarctive present plus any surrounding reversible ischemia or hypoperfusion. And so what we're going to do is we're going to compare this to this, and we're looking for mismatch, also called penumbra, or any potentially reversible ischemia. It's the difference between the MTT and the CBV. And I'll tell you what that all means, but just remember the CBV equals core infarct, and that MTT is core plus surrounding ischemia. All right, so the, um, this is an example of a CT perfusion sequence and off one scanner. And uh, the first thing you get is a stacked MIP as the, as the dye goes into the brain. You just do a series of CT cuts through the brain as it comes in and as it goes out, and you stack them together and you get these MIPs. And then you can measure the dye in the volume of brain tissue as it moves through and come up with a lot of parameters. So we make these um, CT perfusion maps. So uh, these are the maps that are, st that are, are uh, made in the, in, the, in the scanner. So CBF, cerebral blood flow map here with a, a, a units that go to 100, and we'll detail that later. And then the CBV map, cerebral blood volume maps with units that go up to uh, 6. And then time to drain uh, maps with, uh, in seconds, the units go up to 15. And then mean transit time in seconds with units up to 10. All right, so CBF stands for cerebral blood flow. CBV stands for cerebral blood volume. MTT stands for mean transit time. TTD is time to drain. And then some scanners generate a T max, time to maximum intensity. All right, so here's what the series look like on a um, CT perfusion study. So first you just get a topogram, and then you get uh, a series of slices. So our, our scanner does um, 22 slices through the head, covering most of the head, and it repeats it every half second, or every second for 30 seconds. So you're gonna get 11 slices through the the, through the brain as the dye starts and then then scan the brain again, scan it again, scan it again, scan it again, scan it again as the dye moves in, stays in the parenchyma and then washes out. Keep scanning it out to 30 seconds and then use those images to make your maps. And then they're gonna have a couple of um, sort of working pages. One's gonna show you the dye intensity curves going in and out, make sure that they're good quality. And then you're gonna stack all the pictures together, make a MIP where you can see the vessels, but the CT angiogram is better for that. And here's what you really want to look at. These four series, they have, uh, these, these are the number of images in them, and they're going to have um, these four series, a cerebral blood flow acquisition, cerebral blood volume acquisition, the time to drain acquisition, and the MTT, uh, mean transit time acquisition. So these are the series you want to display to, to interpret the study. So first, Let's talk about what is normal perfusion parameters. What are the normal ones? So cerebral blood flow to the gray matter, it's a little higher than the white matter, so we usually uh, look at the gray matter. So cerebral blood flow of 60 mLs and 100 grams of tissue per minute would be your normal cerebral blood flow, or CBF. Now cerebral blood volume, four mLs, four milliliters of blood, or in our case, four millimeters of contrast, uh, within a 100 gram unit of uh, brain parenchyma, that's your CBV normals, and then mean transit time, about four seconds to get in and get out of uh, a normal. So 60 would be normal CBF, four CBVs, and, and four seconds for MTT. And then I'll just mention quickly here, so um, that's the normal, but then what are you gonna call uh, infarcted? So usually they tend to use a CBF of less than 30, maybe 40, but less than 30 would be infarct. CBV of less than two would be infarct. All right, so what do they look like? So 
here's the CBV map. So these are going to be 22 or 22 slices at five millimeter slices. But there, this is just one slice. And this was going to look like, and it's called blood volume or CBV, cerebral blood volume, and it's expressed in mLs of blood and 100 mLs of tissue. And uh, the, the units go up to six. So, uh, so six mLs up to six. And normal for a CBV was four. So half of six is three. So the normal cortex should be, you know, four and up. So it should be, you know, yellows and reds would be sort of normal cortex and normal basal ganglia. And then this is a, a, a CBF, cerebral blood flow. And that's the uh, mLs of blood or contrast and 100 mLs of tissue per minute. How much flows through there? And the normal CBF was about 60. This unit goes up to 100. So normal for gray matter is about 60. So half of 100 is 50, so a little bit up there would be 60. So we should have like yellows and reds for normal cortex and normal gray matter in the basal ganglia. All right, so mean transit time in seconds. So the normal MTT was about four seconds. So this is up to 10, so half of that would be five. So down in there would be normal. So blues and greens would be your normal mean transit time. Now this side over here is abnormal. So this is what an abnormal would look like. It's the mean transit time is too high. It's taking too long. You're getting up here too many seconds. It's taking too many seconds to get uh, in and out of this brain parenchyma. So this is slow flow. So this, this is abnormal over here. And then the time to drain is a nice, um, a nice sequence because it tends to show the abnormalities nicely. So time to drain in seconds. So again, in the normals, usually you know, similar to MTT in four second range. So normals down in here is 15. So you no know, normals will be down here. But on this side, it's too high. It's taking too long to drain. So slow flows and slow to get out. And then if we look back at those, um, at the, uh, the cerebral blood flow, knowing where the defect is here, looking back, you can say, well, you know, it is a little bit decreased over in this area. So the abnormality of cerebral blood flow, you're going to have too little blood flow getting in there. So the CBF goes down when it gets bad. And then the cerebral blood volume, there's still blood volume over there, so it's not cord infarcted. Okay, so how bad does it have to be to call it an infarct? And should we use uh, CBV or CBF to tell. So there were, here's some studies from the literature. So in 2006, uh, Wintermark um, used a CBV of less than two to call a core infarct. And his, his, the accuracy of predicting whether that was going to be a core infarct or not was in the mid-90s. And then um, you also can use CBF of less than 40 to predict a core infarct in the mid-80 range. Or you can tighten that up a little bit and use a CBF of less than 30 and get a core infarct predictor uh, of the upper 80s. So those are your options. You can use CBV to predict the core infarct or a really bad CBF to predict the core infarct. Then to predict your surrounding ischemia, you can use MTT, MTT or you can use another um, parameter called Tmax. And so those are your kind of your ischemia predictors. Okay, so um, just in, uh, as a reminder, so visually when we, when we do the visual inspection technique, we're going to say CBV equals our core infarct, but realize that we also could use a CBF value of less than 30 to be a predictor of core infarct, and the quantitative me measurements tend to use that. And then we're, we're visually inspecting, we're going to use MTT and use that as a predictor of the core infarct plus the surrounding ischemia, or we could, or some quantitative methods, use a Tmax of uh, greater than six seconds for that. So we're going to visually inspect it, and we're going to use uh, CBV and MTT as our primary parameters. So here's um, a figure to give you the idea. So um, this is the CBV, and this is the MTT map. So say there's a small CBV defect, but a moderate size MTT defect. So we would say that that is a you know pretty pretty a large amount of mismatch. Right? So we say there's a small core infarct with a significant amount of surrounding potentially reversible ischemia. If we we're going to quanti try to quantitate that, we'd say, well, maybe this is 5 mL defect. This was a 50 mL defect. So if we said 50 minus 5 is 45, that would be our mismatch volume. Or we could do a ratio and divide 50 by 5 for 10. And now, see my next video for the rest of this.